different episodes. Today, you're joining me on my drive where I think it's gonna rain. Not to worry though, I'll be using Open Weather Map along with the TomTom Tom Maps APIs to see whether I'll encounter any actual rain on my drive today. So today we're going to be talking about uh, using Open Weather Map with uh, the TomTom Maps APIs, which is luckily something that we're on uh, that we've written about on the devlog itself. So essentially, I feel like at a high level, you're using um, the map tiles for basically two different modes, right? So we have um, clouds and yeah. we have precipitation at the end of the day, right, Jose? Yes, um, this um, version of the uh, map tiles that Open Weather uh, Map provides. Um, there are more than that, actually. There are more than those two. We're going to be using all, only those two for now because uh, we are going to be using for everybody to try it out as well, uh, the free version, the free account that you can create that allows you to have certain access to a certain set of the API. The API is quite big. Quite a complete, I must admit, anything that you need to do with weather. I was very much impressed of what they have to offer. So this is for the API, but do we want to go to the main site? Uh, yeah. Okay, yeah cool. Let's go. Yeah. So open weather. I right. like the idea here. Yep. So they have a support for mobile application, for mobile APIs, of course, for web, of course, and of course, REST APIs. And we are interested in the REST, the REST APIs, of course. Right. So if, for us, I think it means that we could, um, I mean, could we actually make this available for mobile if somebody wanted to use it with iOS? Because I know this tutorial, I think, only covers web, right? Um, yes. So, but uh, I imagine, I wonder if it would work in terms of like, I, in terms of iOS. I always wonder because I like working with iOS. Um, but here I know it really just goes specifically into like the JavaScript and everything. It's a lot simpler on here. So I don't know if it would actually be compatible on iOS. Mm. Well, REST APIs are REST APIs. There are also libraries that you can use in iOS and Android to, to connect with APIs, for example. But I, I do know that they have their own SDKs. So, yeah, okay, okay. But in this case, um, it's just simple uh, REST API calls. We, we, we're gonna use fetch, normal, mm -hmm. in JavaScript, just to get the, uh, the information that we need. Yeah. So I think, so here we're going to be using, uh, we're also going to be using version 6. So I know this one is a little bit older, so it does point to version 5, but we'll be using version 6 of, of the web SDK as well. So that way this one gets yeah. a little bit of an update through this video, and that way when this is later on YouTube, it'll also be using version 6. So this will sort of serve as, a, as an extra piece. The, the new version 6 was released um, no more than a week ago. And if you go to the... Um, where to download the SDK in mm -hmm. a developer portal, it will go straight to the person 6. So, yeah, exactly, exactly. Update. Okay, cool. Um, so I can actually, if you want, I can swap the screen over to you so we can get started with it. Sure. Let's sure. do that. Let, let me know when uh, I have the screen. Cool, yeah, you have the screen now. So I f uh, we forgot to mention the pop-up. So I think the article oh, yeah. <laughs> also mentions that when you click and on the map, it will try to get the weather information on that location and create a pop-up out of it. We can also do that. Let's see how it looks like. Okay, let's start some coding. Uh, let me see. I have opened an empty file to start this from scratch. Uh, let me see. Can you see my empty file? Yeah, I can see the empty file. So it's an HTML file. We're going to open it using, um, uh, I'm using Virtual Studio. Virtual um, Studio. Yeah. Studio mm -hmm. code, Visual Studio code. Sorry, um, let's create a normal HTML file. We'll get a doc type HTML by default. Yeah, and okay, HTML. We're gonna do an HTML file, and usually we're gonna add the this JavaScript SDK if I declare here in the head, and we have our body. Oops, no boo boo. A body. <laughs> and that's it. We're done. That's and it. That is all. Fast. That's the tutorial. Yeah. <laughs> the rest is just gravy. <laughs> let's see. Let's see how it looks like. We have we have a shell at least. We have. That, that's it. That's all. That's all we need. <laughs> um, you can take over. 
the, the, the weather's fine everywhere. I think I think that's the it's that sums up the API calls. <laughs> uh, okay, let's go to developer portal. I'm gonna get another code that I have recently here with only using version six. So we'll upgrade the sample application. Uh, yes. Um, we'll be inside the hand and the same. I have this one here. Let's confirm the latest version is 6.4. Let's double check and keep up with the documentation. SDK for web. You can see it here in the download section, version 6. And uh, indeed, it's version 6.4. <laughs> So we're adding the map is using a diff, and it's a okay. As always, we we'll start with the basic map. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. it's fun to start. Well, yeah, no, it, it's fun in that way. Uh, it's also building not so far away from like most of the tutorials we we do because when we're on here, we always usually start with the the basic version, with the exception of I think when we did geofencing, um, yeah. and a few things a few times where we sort of um, picked up from where we left off. Most of the time, we're still setting, we're still starting with the basics, and so here. It's starting with the, the basic map, so even if you just have the basic map running, you can still follow the tutorial. And inside, this is diff, and then we're going to add the script. What do you want the script? We're going to add the code here. So the first thing is to create the map object. And then we know this is a pretty map. And the pretty map contains a, has a bunch of options. And the first one is the key. Oh, you remember the key? It's not a, it's not the character. Oh, it's that one. Yeah. Is it this one? Yeah, it's so. that one. Okay. Okay, I will have to tell them, okay, the, uh, the container is the uh, div called map, the ID is map. Mm, we're going we're gonna to center where? Center on Austin. But I don't know if we have much weather here. <laughs> Something like that. We just translate it roughly. That should be Austin. Yeah, yeah, that's Austin. Yeah? Yep. Something like that. So that's basically what I sent you, so yeah, this should be yeah. good. So we have a key, we have a container, we have a map, location, and this should be it. Let's, we do have a map. And there's Austin. That is Austin, Texas. It still says this is all folks, but I kind of have come to appreciate it. Yes. I went to Open Open Weather Map and I created an account and I have an API key from them already. I'm going to paste it here. So I believe that everybody who is watching this video, either live or eventually in YouTube, will actually <laughs> have access to an API key. How did they create the, the, the uh, clouds layers to listen? They add in the layer. Oh, okay. They do. They do like this. They, this is the URL of the tiles, mm -hmm. the four of the tiles, and they probably add the layer. Yes, they added the layer with this uh, format. Uh, we're gonna do. Yeah, that's what. Yeah, that's what we have. Yes, but I'm gonna do something better. Uh, let's do clouds. Cloud. Cl clouds first. Or clouds. I think that's also how the article starts. Anyways, using clouds first. Yeah, let's go get an object for the cloud source. So if I know, okay, the type should be raster, and the tiles should be an array uh, array of the URLs, and then I know that the tile size is standard to fifty six, like we do mm -hmm. in the TomTom Maps APIs for this um, for display. Uh, 0 and 12. Mm -hmm. So 0 and maximum is 12. And we're going to be nice because every time we make an application, we have to attribute someone. So this is for open weather map.org. And difference here is that we don't have to do, um, well, you're creating the source, but you're not having to add the same. Um, Prefix that's in the article in terms of like TomTom -tom map, like add source, etc. Yeah. Well, right now, okay. Yes. Uh, we need it. We need the uh, the URL for the tiles, which yep. is right here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and that's where it picks up basically. Yeah. 
Let's go copy that one. Okay, and our app ID is the super. Okay, we have the uh, this cloud source. Now we're gonna create a layer. Let's call it a cloud layer, something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So for cloud layer, um, well, I, I, I have an ID. I gotta call it uh, the idea is cloud layer. Okay, the type should be still raster. Mm, the source of the layer should be cloud. So I'm gonna call it cloud source as well. Mm -hmm. Cloud source. And um, then we have it visible. Oh, you okay? Thank you. Yeah, so we have layout. the layout. Yeah, layout, right? <laughs> and layout has vis visible or visibility? Visibility and visible. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so, okay, visibility, like that. Mm -hmm. And it's visible. Invisible, yeah, correct. Correct. Got it. Okay, so when the map is loaded, completely finished loading, then we just, boom, add that layer. And the event is load when it's loaded. Right? Load. Then when it's loaded, then execute the function. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to say we're going, when it's loaded, just add these layers. First. Yeah, because we add back. the layer immediately. Yeah. Add the source. So it was cloud. We're going to call it cloud source. Cloud source. Yeah. And we send the object. Cloud source then it is yeah okay make, make sure that this name cloud source matches yeah exactly layer. this one huh? still this is the version one the name sorry and then the other layer and that's our cloud layer the layer is cloud layer yeah and that's it and that's all it takes to, to just add um the tiles for the cloud basically yeah so we're just adding an extra, uh, extra layer and defining a new source, which is from, from Open Weather Map. Mm -hmm. It's super easy, too. It's super easy. So if you just wanted to here. stop there, it's just basically instantiating the map, which we've done a ton of times on, on here. And then it's just, it's just adding that extra outside source, too, which is super simple. Oh, I see some clouds here. Do you, though? Ah, they're, they're, they're down by the Gulf. That would make more sense. Uh, but mo mostly the mid yeah Midwest has most of the clouds. Okay. Except for Louisiana, which has all of the clouds. <laughs> Let's see. Let's see Let's around. Let's see the, the precipitation. Let's yeah, that's the that's the the fun blue layer. Ah, yeah. Let's take a look. <laughs> We're using Weather Maps 1.0. Let's see. They do have. I know they have a specific layer. Oh, there they are. Clouds. There's a precipitation. Oh, we have sea level pressure. Yeah. Wind this is fun because I really love playing with stuff like this, so I would actually be interested in doing like the temperature map because that would see a lot of fluctuations and things like that, and that'd be fun. Yeah. So we just go um, create a new source for this. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna copy it. Just to see it. Uh, rain source. By for example. Um called what? Precipitation? Precipitation. New, same API. Hopefully, it will work. Let's see. <laughs> but it's same thing. New, yes. And now we're going to add. We need to layer. The... We're going to add a layer. Rain here. layer. Rain layer. Can I call it rain? Layer. Sounds very calming somehow. The rain layer. Rain layer. Should we add music onto this? Imagine we have rain noise in the background. Oh, that would have been such a good idea is to have rain, rain noise play. You could do it on YouTube, though, of have the rain noise play. <laughs> rain soothing sounds now. I don't, I, I don't think I'm able to. I don't think the rain would be, would be too audible. <laughs> and then the rain has stopped. <laughs> um, well, map at source. So the source is called rain so oh, oh, oh. source rain source. And then they add the layer, add layer. 
and rain layer. <laughs> There's absolutely the nothing here right now. It's just a bluish sky. Oh, oh there look, rain. Is, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, there's rain there. Rain is somewhere. It's raining in Baton Rouge, in New Orleans, New Orleans. right? Yeah. That's up, yeah, New yeah, Orleans. yeah. New Orleans, yeah. I've not been, so, but. Atlanta. Yeah, this area. Oh, okay. Nashville. It's okay, quite, cool. Why rain? Blue so it's cloud. going east, basically. Yes. Oh, I have this big sweeping. I feel like a meteorologist, but I have this big sweeping arc of rain going. <laughs> What other uh, nice features we do have in the API? Let's see in our article. So we do have already the layers. That was fun. I guess the next thing is the, uh, the pop-ups. Pop-ups. So we can and... click on a city or have sort of a list of, of cities or areas and we can have yeah. like a little weather summary. Okay, let me just quickly read here. So in the pop-up, I can see if there is no maximum. Okay. The, the current weather data, uh, you pass along, along a lot, a location, and will give you all this information. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, <laughs> see this in a circle. I, I, I would expect to be a lot, long and long, long, sorry, lot and long. With a, with a radius. Yeah. And a, a radius, right? Yeah. It doesn't say radius. Yeah, that's throwing me off, too. I see that. Huh. I don't know. <laughs> Is it oh, maybe just the radius? Is it maybe just calculating the distance outward and it's not calling it a radius? No, I think they are okay. Oh, it's just recording the number of cities. Yes, that's what it is. So just like find a city in the radius, or in the then, in nearby. In, a, in that radius, find me five or find me fifty maximum. Interesting. Okay, let's try that one. Okay, let's do it. <clears throat> That is I'm an interesting way of putting it because you're just essentially you have to then query multiple places if you use a radius. Like you have to get several other cities information then. Yeah. So let's do it when I click. So you click on the map, get the long lot, mm -hmm. do a fetch request. And then it should have the... See what we get. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Let's go back to the code. When the map is clicked, Click, dip. On click. <laughs> on. on click. Execute this function. This function creates an event, and usually this event has many, uh, lots of data, including the long and large location of the word click. So I can, sh I can display it just for you. And we're going to create a function like weather for city around this location. <laughs> not, not a bad name. Yeah, that's it. You suppose this, this function will get everything. And let's see, let's get the function here. Weather and then it receive a long lot. Uh, so let's get uh, a URL. I will copy it later. <laughs> and then we have a URL. I assume it's a get, HTTP get. So should not be any problems to get this. Let weather data. Mm, I wait for the fetch and send in the URL. Mm -hmm. to say. So we have a URL, we pass the data, and then we give me the data, and fetch will give me the yep. web for the call. Oh, wait, fetch doesn't return data. Fetch return a, res uh, a promise, uh, a response. And then we have to go wait again to get the data. Wait, so it's still the way around. So this is the response is first, mm -hmm. and then the data. That's what. Uh, it gets uh, from the response. Uh, response. You have to call JSON. 
that, that that's the JSON object. So fetch always return like a promise yeah. is not there, there yet, and then after that you have to wait for the promise to be executed and it returns the uh, the data itself. And then we have the JSON, JSON yeah, in JSON file, and that JSON file we can print it for now. Yeah, See because then we can then we can print and we should have. So we, um, should we have the other cities or would we just have our lat long? We just click on it. Yeah. We click and uh, to get in the lat long so we see what do we get yeah. from that. S simple. Hey, we have an API key. It's a, let's, go, let's go and use the same API key to solve it. And, okay, how many, how many cities do we want? Like uh, four, five? Four, five. I, see, I think minimum is five. Yeah, I think that, yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, minimum is five. Five, five cities. And then we have lat and long, but the lat and long is here. So, well, we can replace it. Place, oh, do it all. There are many ways to do this. <laughs> I'm just doing it quickly. The, I think it's long. Yeah, it's here, long, but with the long, Longitude, which is in our case called LNG, not long. That's a, yeah, uh, exactly. So we're using the await, and um, yeah. await only works only works on async yeah. functions. Uh, to put that, HTTPS. Mm -hmm. uh, right again. We have five elements in this JSON file. Let's see if I can. Yeah, like this. And we have, you tell me, you, do you know Austin? Yeah, Texas? those are neighborhoods in North Austin. Oh, so it's not getting me cities, it's getting me neighborhoods, like areas. Well, one, two of them are cities. Which one is city? Pflugerville and Round Rock are cities, but I mean, they could also be considered neighborhoods, I suppose. Okay. So the first one... But you can I see them it. on the map, so you see like uh, Round Rock, and then you see Wells Branch below it, and then Pflugerville. Um, so you see some of them actually on the map. Yeah. Oh, areas. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Got the code. So we have the weather data. Data, and we have a an object called list, which is an array. Okay. List is an array. If if you are an array for each element, uh, there it is. Mm -hmm. For each element, we're going to have a pop up. Var, opa. I don't think I'm gonna use the var now. <laughs> Did thing. Opa. No. Pop up. I know this is a tomtom -tom, um, pop up, and it needs to have an object here. That dash sign is not correct. And <laughs> I was gonna say the dash sign will kill the pop up yeah. sign. <laughs> Said. Uh, for now, text. We're gonna set the temperature. And the temperature is in element, element, which is the element of here, main temp. Main temp. And we should actually put the Fahrenheit if you want. Yeah, we, need to or we could just keep them in standard <laughs> and just scare everybody. <laughs> scare everybody. <laughs> Element, where's the position? The long and lat. There it is. Scored. 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 So long and lat. Scored. And then add to the map. That's it. Cool. That's that's a simple pop-up um, for each element of the list. Let's make it look look like. Let's see, Let's see what the pop-ups look like. First Let's pop -ups. See. We are now in the application, and if I click on Austin, voila, we have now five different locations around Austin with different temperatures, which is exactly what we did. Weather conditions, and they have a section called weather icons. And knowing the type of condition that we have, we can get the icon from them. So we don't have to actually come, uh, create or create these icons ourselves. Yeah, so we just get the links directly from Open Weather Map then. 
Yeah, the only thing that we need to provide is the um, the code, the code of the, mm -hmm. uh, the icon code. Yeah. So right now we are creating the pop-up element and we're adding a text. So the text is fine, but now we're going to add more than that because I want this text and I want also an icon on it. So we're going to create a element, an HTML element. I think we have to use the, um, the pop-up has a method or a function called set DOM content, the, like uh, the, the object <laughs> model okay. in HTML that you can add it. I think we're going to create one of those. Let me see, something like this. Instead of set text, set done content. And we, we can content here and we can create, let's create a function to do that for us. Like create DOM and we pass the element. So when that's set done content and we create DOM and pass and uh, pass the element and this will, this function will return a DOM, a DOM element that we want to add for the mm -hmm. pop-up. And we, let's say we can add it before that. Mm, yeah. Function, uh, create DOM, and then the element is actually the city. To be honest, yeah, it's, yeah. it's called a city or whatever yeah, element it is. Each city. Yeah. And according to um, the documentation, let's let's add it, create a div. A div uh, equal. How do you create a div? To create an element called div. So document create element element and call div. Oh, sorry. So this create a div. And if I'm not incorrect, set in a variable for now. So main temp. Now the temperature we can round it. Uh, you go round it to fix. We know it's a number, zero decimal. We can round it like that. Mm -hmm. And this is a number, but we need a function um, temperature. We can do like that. something to say. Yeah, to yeah. say like Fahrenheit, Fahrenheit yeah. or something. Yeah. And okay, we have this uh, text. We can add it, mm, but we have to make this as a node. So wait, uh, we can actually wrap wrap this into a into a text node. So let me see something like this: uh, document create text node, and then we pass a string, which is exactly this string. We said it. So we get a text node with the content of the of the temperature. Mm -hmm. We add this temperature to the div. So yeah. div append child to this temperature temp, oh, sorry, temp, that's the first thing and then at the end we we'll return the div so what up we we'll return the div so what, what have we done is just exactly the same that we have before just added the temperature hmm? let's get the code for the image this is inside the city weather and it's an array, first get the first element, it's called icon. That's the code, right? Let's create an image element. Let's call it image. No mystery here. Document, <laughs> create element. No mystery. Let's, mystery. let's create an image. There it is. We created a, a node element called image. And the only thing that we need to do in this object image is to add the source. The source is the mm -hmm. URL. So, image source is equal actually this will bring a an icon right now yeah okay and what, what okay what would happen if i just add the image again to the div i mean div that's what i was gonna say uh, next <laughs> uh, yeah. a pen child this image let's see let's see there we go. Oh, that's cute. It's the same image. That's cute. Yeah. This I like is, it. Is, this, let's add the code. The code goes inserted here. Yeah. The code is there. Yeah. And let's run it again. Uh, oh, there it is. Sunny. It's sunny. It is sunny. So that's getting the icon for our specific weather. Let's see. Chicago. 
Oh, Chicago is cloudy. I like the icon still. Yeah, it's very nice. 25, 24 Fahrenheit. Okay. Let's see, what, what is the description? The description is inside weather. Weather, weather description. Weather, over, yeah. Weather description. In this case, overcast clouds. Mm, description. Right? Mm -hmm. It's a description. We're going to add a text note document create text note and it's a string and the string is actually the value that is inside city weather first element description description ah except it's weather it's except it is weather wow you got a typo where I, I've been um, conditioned from our typo pain from the past episodes to hyper check yes. everything now. <laughs> Thank you, Oli. <Olivia. laughs> okay, now we, let's let's add this note to the uh, div. Okay, div uh, append child this description. Okay, let's see it. Reload. And um, okay, we're still in Austin. Click here and clear skies. There it is. There we go. So we have basically our actually completed pop up though, in terms of all the things we wanted to see. We have the temperature, we have the icon for the actual weather, and we have the description. So it's actually a functional weather map now in that way, well, just with a big well, icon. <laughs> excellent. All right. well, with that, uh, I think uh, we have our little application complete. That's a wrap That's what we'll on using Open Weather Map. So thanks for yeah. watching. See you later. See I mean, you yeah. later.